Hey, why hypergamy makes complete sense. I was watching a video on YouTube from this channel called Psych Hacks, and the video was titled, only founders get equity. I'll link it in the description. The video outlines a strategy that women can use to increase their likelihood of ending up with a successful man. The strategy is essentially sort through guys until she finds one that she believes will be successful, secure this man in a relationship, and help him work towards his goals. The author compared this strategy to a more common but less effective one of going after a guy that's already successful because there's already tons of other girls doing the same. I really liked the psych hacks video, but it got me thinking about the other side of the story and why girls implement that less effective strategy in the first place. Why should you even listen to me? I used to be so bad at dealing with girls. I could not make eye contact or hold eye contact. I could not approach them. I could not spark a relationship. And if we were to fast forward five years, now I can do all of those things a lot better. And in addition, I can approach girls in public, in broad daylight with lots of people around and I can do it with little hesitation. Why hypergamy makes complete sense. Hypergamy is essentially girl is with man. Girl sees new man that she perceives as better in some way than current man. Girl leaves current man to be with new man, better man. And the general thinking behind it is that throughout history, safest place for a woman to be is with the most capable man that she can possibly secure as far as safety, security, longevity, etc. Now, pre-civilization, the most capable man may have been the deadliest man or the strongest man or the best hunter, etc. Nowadays, in a civilized society, a more capable man simply may mean a man with more money or more charm or more of whatever she deems as valuable enough to leave her current partner for. All right, that's what is hypergamy. Now, why do I believe it's justified? I'll start with a personal story here because I know that you super red pillars are squeezing your dick in anger right now because of the title. A few weeks ago, I was with a friend of mine. She's 20 years old and we were talking about how she partied like three nights in a row for Halloween weekend. I said, damn, you've been aggressive with the partying lately. And she said, well, yeah, I'm in my prime right now. I have to make it count. I had two immediate internal reactions, not external. The first was, wow, I'm experiencing the prime version of this girl right now. I get to experience her at her peak beauty. I almost felt honored. And the second internal reaction was, damn, she's right. That's actually incredibly sad. At 20 years old, she probably won't get any prettier than she is right now. Obviously, we know that there are things that she can do to maintain her attractiveness, staying in shape, learning new skills, etc. But the point is, she probably will never have as many men attracted to her as she does right now. These next few years are her literal prime. Now, if we were to compare that to me, the guy, while my youthfulness will also start to fade away just like hers, my success with women will probably improve year over year. I will probably have more women attracted to me than I do right now in the future, assuming no drastic events occur. If I'm further into my career, I'll be making more money. If I keep working out, I'll be more ripped. If I keep going out and taking social risks, I'll be more capable in more social situations. Basically what I'm saying is, if I keep putting in work, I become attractive to more girls as a function of time plus effort. Now her, even if she keeps putting in work, which she should do, unfortunately, she still becomes attractive to fewer men as a function of time plus effort. Sure, I would prefer funny over boring, outgoing over shy, rich over poor. However, these qualities in a woman weigh substantially less to me than beauty does. Not by choice, but by nature. I can't choose who I'm biologically attracted to. To drive the point home, I would take a gorgeous girl that is stupid, broke, and shy over an ugly girl that is funny, rich, and outgoing every time. And you probably would too. When I first learned about hypergamy in 2019 or so, I was slightly angry about it. I had just personally experienced it a year prior in high school where the girl that I was seeing decided to explore better options. I was also a bit deflated when I learned about it. After all, I just wanted to be loved for being myself like the Disney movies taught me. But think about hypergamy through the lens of the girl from the first story who said she was in her prime. Of course, she wants better, stronger, richer. Wouldn't you? Like, seriously, think about it. 
pretend that you are her. You're 20 years old in your literal prime, getting loads of attention from guys. You can have any guy you want, but for a limited time only. She knows that she won't be getting all of this attention and all of these romantic options in 5, 10, 15 years. So she should absolutely be enjoying all of it right now. To tie this back into hypergamy, who do you think the girl would choose? Would she choose the 18 year old version of me who can't make her come, doesn't have a car, splits the bill, lives with his parents, is socially anxious, insecure, skinny, timid, etc. Or would she choose the 23 year old version of me who is more sexually experienced, has a car, takes care of the bill, lives alone in a luxury building, is more confident, outgoing, better groomed, more muscular, doesn't blow up her phone, etc. It's a very easy choice. At the end of the day, we just want the best deal for ourselves. If you had as many romantic options as she does, wouldn't you want to explore? Especially if you knew that you were going to lose a large majority of those romantic options in the near future. It only makes sense that she spend her best years identifying the best or most capable man that she can possibly secure, or at the very least, experiencing those men that she knows she won't have access to in the next coming years. It only makes sense. Now, I'm not here to discuss whether or not hypergamy is morally wrong or right. The point is that hypergamy makes complete sense. So what should you do with this information? Improve. Find guys online or in person that display the qualities or character traits that you want to emulate and copy them. That's it. Is it the coolest route? No but it's effective. That's all I did. That's all I do. I find people that are successful with girls. I watch what they do and I imitate. There's no need to reinvent the wheel. So that's what I got for this video. I hope that you enjoyed. All I do is lay out my journey on camera from being bad with girls to being less bad with girls. And I'm still currently on that journey. And I'm making videos along the way. So feel free to subscribe. I hope you enjoyed and I hope that you were able to pull value from this.